Tonight we're going to be doing a little q and I got a bunch of questions from you guys, really great questions, and I'll probably be on here talking forever because I can get a little long-winded and sometimes I get a little excited. So pardon me if I happen to, you know, say a swear word or something because it happens. For those of you that don't know, I am Jessica Perrier. I go by Jessica Posh. That's my personalized brand. Um, and I joined Posh in December of 2014, so just a little over two years ago. I've had a lot of success with Posh, but it's not, um, it wasn't luck. <laughs> I put in a lot of hours. I would not even like to admit some of the hours that I have put into my business, but it was totally worth it. Posh has really changed my life, and it's pretty awesome because there's still so much opportunity that literally if you are on this training right now, you have the same opportunity. Like we are just barely scratching the surface with the growth of this company. You know the products are bomb. You know all we have to do is get posh on people. This is what I do, people. I go off on tangents. But anyway, it's a super opportunity with Posh right now. So if you're on this training, congratulations, because the very best thing that you can do for your business and yourself is to seek out training. Even if you're getting the same information over and over again, keep training because it's going to help open doors in your mind. It's going to help things click together and it's going to help you keep going through the motions until it becomes second nature or a habit to keep working your business. And whether you're working Working at five hours a week or 50 hours a week, you're going to grow a business. Obviously, the more time you put in, the faster it's going to happen. But anyway, let's get into the questions. How do you reach beyond your faithful customers? So you want to be asking for referrals. You want to be reaching out to your current customers, asking them, hey, who else do you know that I could maybe send a pampering package to? Ask them for referrals. Have your current customers host parties or find other people to host parties and that is the very best way to grow your customer base. When I hold a party, I offer every single party guest a sample package. Why do I do that? Because hi, we're desperate for people to ask us to request a sample package. So I have a captive audience of people in a party, I'm offering them all sample packages and that kind of brings an, uh, the party to the next level closer to a home party. Of course it's not a home party because we can't ultimately replace having a bunch of women in the same room together and I super encourage you to book home parties if there's any way you can do that. But Facebook parties where everybody has received a sample package and even like a very similar sample package at that, it allows them to have that home party feel where they're all getting excited about one of the products so-and-so tried the mask and posts the selfie in the party and then so-and-so also tried the mask and posts the selfie in the party and then um you know bobby jean who was probably not going to try her samples because she doesn't have me time or whatever she goes and tries the mask now because the other two tried it and posted in the party how wonderful it was so um parties i get long-winded guys parties is a great way to expand uh, your circle in that way too Okay, how do you reach your cold market? Get on social media, get on YouTube, find a social media platform that works for you. If you are absolutely vehemently against videos, then that's okay. You don't have to make videos to grow your business, but I promise you if you make videos, you will grow your business because never even mind YouTube, if you put videos on your personal page, if you put videos in your VIP group, if you put videos on your business page, people are absolutely 100% going to watch them. They might not immediately like and comment on them, but they will 110% watch them. People are curious. I mean, hi, we're nosy by nature. So when you put yourself out there on video, people are absolutely going to watch it. And what do you have to lose? Somebody might judge you. I mean, I worried about people judging me. I definitely worried about people judging me when I first started making videos. But guess what? I really don't care if they were judging me now. It was worth the effort and it will be worth it for you. I promise you that way more people are going to be intrigued and proud of you and excited to watch your content way more than anybody is going to be judging you in any way, shape or form. Why do I have so many social media platforms? So the reason I have so many social media platforms, I think is just because I've experimented with a bunch. Like whenever one was announced, I was like, ooh, is this gonna be the next hot thing? And because of the success that I have found on YouTube, I'm, I'm 
anxious to check out the new platforms. So um, while I do dabble in various platforms, I really only focus on two. I really only focus on Facebook, making sure that my personal page, you know, I push out good content that's personal, it's a picture of me, or it's me using a product, or it's something I'm doing for my team, or it's an event that I'm going to for Posh. I really just push out those things because my personal Facebook is obviously a great place for any one of us because you can kind of, you know, meet new people, add them to your friends list or whatever, and they're going to be really excited when they see you having fun products or they see you going on, you know, fun trips. People are drawn to passionate people and people are drawn to like, you know, fun stuff happening. So when they see you having a blast at Day Away, it is your job to make sure you're blowing up your personal newsfeed, by the way, when you're gone to Day Away because people are going to ask you, say, so what were you doing in, you know, whatever location you end up in? So YouTube is my primary and Facebook is my secondary, but those are two main platforms. Instagram, I just kind of like do it for fun. I don't actually get sales or recruits from Instagram. Snapchat is totally just for fun. It's where I play around or whatever. I don't get any business from Snapchat. My business page, I do just to kind of go through the motions like it's important to have a business page I think because it's a safe place for somebody to randomly contact you if you're going to be dabbling in Instagram or on YouTube or one of these other platforms by having a Facebook business page it's an official way that they can contact you without them feeling like they may be being like a creeper if they're trying to friend you on Facebook. I mean, I don't care if somebody's interested in Posh, by all means, I want them to friend me. But this is a safer place for somebody that might not want to friend me to be able to contact me. So that's why I maintain my Facebook business page. Um, Facebook does, you know, throttle business pages, so you're not going to get a lot of natural reach from your business page, but that's okay. It doesn't mean that it still shouldn't exist. And when you use a post scheduler, it's really easy to maintain. And I'm talking about like CinchShare or um, I don't know, Hootsuite or any one of these. There's a lot of free ones and you can schedule your posts. So you can sit down one time a week, one time a month and schedule out a bunch of posts. You don't wanna be posting on your business page every single day. I post maybe like five times a week. When you have a Facebook business page, it appears on Google searches. When you go on YouTube, it appears on Google searches. You want to grow your business, you need to cast your net wider, and the best way to do that is social media because social media is free. So there's that. Best way to keep interaction going in VIP groups. So this is a tough one because we've gotta be super consistent and this is another situation where a post scheduler can really help you because then if you've got just a small window of time, you can plan out your posts for almost the entire month and schedule them in there and then you just throw in a couple of live ones every now and again. So the best way I find to keep interaction in my VIP group is to not talk only about Posh. That's my number one recommendation. Just like on our personal page, we don't wanna be posting all posh, but a well-placed posh post once in a while on our personal page really can have a lot of traction. It's the same thing in your VIP group. These are already people that you know love posh, so while we're going to be talking about it a little more frequently than we would on our personal page, we're also going to be intermixing fun um, you know, memes or fun contests. And also, the VIP group is, in my opinion, where I want to invest the most into my business. So you could do something like a VIP of the month club. Monthly, you send your VIPs a sample of something or a collection of samples. Like maybe one month you send them a couple of face masks. And by sending them products regularly, samples regularly, that's an investment in postage and in samples, of course, but you're putting products into to the hands of the people that drive your business. They've already shown that they like shopping posh, they've already shown that they love posh, and now you're giving them a reason to buy every single month by putting new products into their hands. And the same mentality that I just talked about before in um, the Facebook party is absolutely going to happen in your VIP group club. VIP group club. Mm -hmm. This is why I like to do videos with editing because when I say something silly like that, I can just chop it out and pretend like it didn't even happen. <laughs> ah, 
ask them for the things that you need. So I used to be so much better in my VIP group than I am now because my time is taken up so much more with my team and my company. But when I was an up and coming posher, I was very interactive with my VIP group and I was always soliciting selfies from them, all kinds of ways, whether it was um, to enter to win a product or it was to get an entry into a drawing. I was always soliciting them for selfies and it was always a disclaimer that when they provided their entry that it was then free game for me to use in my social media. So then I would take their selfies and I would emblazon them with my, um, my website and I would maybe put like a funny little saying on it or something. I was so good at this. Uh, like and the thing is is I wasn't good at it. I was good at doing it I'm saying you don't have to be a professional graphic designer You just literally take their picture put your website on it put some kind of saying on it and then post it on one of your social media platforms and then Oftentimes the customers love that they were featured for your business and they might even repost it on their personal page So that's an idea making sure you're not always posting posh. That's my best advice it's the most important place that you should keep popping because that is your lifeline. And when you're keeping them really excited, um, that's where you're going to find more hostesses. That's where you're going to get repeat hostesses. And that's where you want to recruit from too because your product lovers are going to be some of your best recruits. How can I book more parties? It's a numbers game. You've got to ask more people. You've got to expand your circle. Um, I've got a recruiting boot camp that I uh, do every month. One of the videos in Recruiting Bootcamp is talking about how you can expand your Franks list. And so Franks list is where we want to start to build our list when we first join Posh. I still have my original Franks list. I One of the questions on here actually was what's your secret top-notch way to track your customers? I don't have a secret way to track my customers. I've got a notebook. So I've got the same notebook that I got when I first joined. I did my Franks list in the beginning of it. And then every time I sent somebody a sample, I would put it in my notebook. And every time I followed up with somebody, I would write it in the notebook. And when it was my day to do follow-ups, I would flip through my notebook page by page and just track who was due for a follow-up. It's not a fancy way. It's not the most efficient way by any means, but it's literally the only way that I will keep up with because I won't keep up an Excel spreadsheet. But if you're an Excel spreadsheeter, hello, that is how you should be tracking your, your um, people. If you've got a little bit of disposable income and you are um, uh, frequently on the computer, then there's a follow-up program called FitFew that I really recommend. Um, it's super awesome. You can set up um, tracking funnels that will prompt you to contact your customers every so often. You can track what products they buy. I know I won't keep it up though, so I do a notebook but you should know about that because it's a good option. Back to the bootcamp thing, you start with your Franks list and then the video that I have in bootcamp talks about different um, categories. So if you think of different categories of people, what nurses do you know? What um, God, babysitters do you know? What waitresses do you know? What people do you know from your church? What people do you know from workout class? What people do you know from the vet? I mean, if you start thinking of different groups of people like that, then you can start to expand your Franks list out to like acquaintances. And it doesn't even have to have a name. It could be the blonde lady that I always run into at the post office when I do the mail drop, like whatever. Stop her and say, hey, lady. I mean, that's obviously not the verbiage you're gonna use, but hey, I wanted to share something with you. I found this company and I'm totally loving it. And you know, you always hold the door open for me. So here's a sweet package, whatever. I approach people in a cheesy way often because that's what works for me because what are they gonna do? Laugh at me, like whatever. I like to be cheesy and that's just what works for me. Other people like to be super sweet and like send, you know, um, random acts of kindness all of the time. And if that's what works for them, great. If you don't ask them to join your team or ask them if they're ready to earn some free posh or ask them if they want a full size BFF, the answer is more often than not going to be no. How do you market a product that you don't care for? Talk about it on the team page. If there's a product that you don't like, post about it on the team page and get some other people's thoughts because for every single product that you don't like, there's somebody else out there that absolutely likes it. So if you're not representing it or you're not offering it to customers that could potentially like it, you're doing them a disservice. I mean, there's people in the world 
I mean, guys, imagine this. There's people in the world that don't like dessert. And some of those people in the world that don't like dessert are waitresses. And if I go out to dinner and the waitress doesn't offer me dessert just because she doesn't like dessert, I'm going to be pretty pissed off. It's the same thing, truly. The product that you don't like could absolutely be one of your customer's absolute favorite products. And you're doing your own self a disservice too because then they're not going to be purchasing and repurchasing it from you when you don't offer it. So if there's a product that you don't like, talk about it so that you can find out how to speak about it if you're ever asked about it by a customer. How do you get past and ignore when you're asking somebody to host? Well, first of all, I would want you to revisit, if you're getting a lot of ignores, revisit how you're asking. A lot of people are really intimidated by or put off by the word party. So call it something other than a party. Or maybe ask them, hey, when are we going to get together and get you some free posh? When are we going to get together and get you some free posh? I didn't say party. I didn't say anything like that. I asked when we're going to get to that. And that should solicit some kind of response. And then we're going to say, well, let's introduce a couple of your friends. I'll put together some sample packages and then we can get together and talk about them. Brainstorm together about some different ways that you can approach somebody, some alternate verbiage that you can use other than will you host a party? Because um, that verbiage can re really be off-putting. How do you get past an ignore? By sending another message. <laughs> I do not allow people to ignore me. I continue to message them, not obviously annoyingly like a mosquito or anything, but I continue to message them semi-regularly until and unless they say, Jessica, stop messaging me. And if they've ignored me a couple of times, I might even say something like, hey, is everything okay? I haven't heard from you. I'm worried. Who's not going to respond to that? Because if they don't want to host, just tell me you don't want to host. Don't ignore me. I hate being ignored. You can't let it get under your skin because they're not ignoring you. They're ignoring the question. And that's just because some people are uncomfortable saying no or answering altogether. Other people just get busy. Oh my God, today I was on the phone. I had, no joke, I had like 15 messages that were just stacking up. I shouldn't even have taken the phone call but I was expecting the phone call and so I took the phone call and so I'm trying to read some of the messages while listening to the phone call and I accidentally clicked mark all as read. I wanted to die. The way that I, cause I'm such an organized person, not really, but the way that I track messages and who I need to respond to is by marking something as unread and I clicked mark all as read and there was no, I was like control Z, like hoping it would undo it even though that's not a function in Facebook. Anyway, so something like that could have happened to your person that ignored you. You don't know. Crazy things happen in people's lives. I bet Melissa has her boys running around sometimes. She opens up a Facebook message and mentally responds, even though she actually didn't type anything, and then puts her phone down to run over before one of the children get hit by a car or something crazy like that. These things happen in people's lives. And then you send that second follow-up message, and I look at it and I'm like, oh my god, I ignored her last time? Ooh, okay, I'll respond to her later. And then I put my phone in my pocket and I forget and it gets buried and then ooh, I mark all of my messages as read. This stuff happens in people's lives so you cannot take it personally as somebody ignored you. And if you just get used to ignoring, or ignoring, <laughs> assuming that nobody is ignoring you, then it'll start to roll off your back a little easier and you'll power through. And the bottom line is that our business is a numbers game. So you've gotta power through no's to get to yeses if you wanna have success. And the sooner that you get over these problems and you power through those no's, the sooner you're gonna have success because that's literally all it takes. I am a big fan of recruiting in case you guys didn't already know that. I try to recruit every single person. That's how I'm the number one recruiter. Well, I mean, YouTube helped a lot as well because it really casts your net as wide as perfectly possible. But I try to recruit every single person. If somebody is giving me a $75 order, I'm like, I'm happy to take your order, but I just really want you to know that our starter kit is $99. And when you buy that, you're going to get these things from your order plus all of these other things. Or if somebody hosts a party and it's at $600, I'm like, before we submit this party, I just want you to know if you wanted to sign up, we could submit this as your launch party and then you already are earning back most of the you know starter kit costs. I want to recruit 
everybody. And you know why I want to recruit everybody? Because I was a kidnapper and now I'm a platinum premier. So hi, I'm happy to accept kidnappers because I would really like to recruit a Jessica Posh. I'm just saying. You never ever know. And there are women on my team who when they joined my team, I totally thought they were just going to be total duds because they had excuses and they just didn't go out of their comfort zones and blah, blah, blah. But then one post or one video that I shared made a difference to one of them. And then she made a video and then she found some confidence and then she made another video and now she goes live in her VIP group like it's her job and she's a pink plus two on her way to pink plus three. You never ever know. It's so crazy if you look to pull stuff out of the people that are in your downline or yourself, you can really make a difference. It's you guys, it's so insane. Seriously. Posh just hit 100,000 consultants. That is so nothing. It's a drop in the bucket. There's millions of Mary Kay ladies and millions of Avon ladies. Hello, Posh Opportunity. Okay. I told you guys I get a little excited sometimes. What do you do when somebody says they want to think about it? So if you're trying to recruit and somebody says that they want to think about it, what do you do? My first response is no pressure at all, but what is it that you have to think about? Find out exactly what they're thinking about. Are they thinking about, oh my God, can I afford the inventory? Because if we get them to voice that, we can say, hey, by the way, no, we don't have to carry inventory. So that's not even something she has to be thinking about. But if she says, I have to think about whether or not I can fit it into my schedule, that's our opportunity to offer a solution to that objection. And we're not trying to say, oh, that's not an objection. Here's the answer. Now can you sign up? We're just offering information to her. I want to offer information to you so that when you go home to think about X, Y, Z, I can give you all of the information you need to think about it. Does that make sense? How do you get new teammates started? Who do you send a welcome pack to? That's a great question. So I do send a welcome package out to my personal frontline recruits um, after they join. But it's important to note that we cannot incentivize anybody to join our team. So you cannot publicly advertise that you send out a welcome package to new recruits. You cannot tell somebody before they join, oh, and when you join, I'm gonna send you a welcome package. That would be incentivizing people. So while I do send them out to my new recruits, I just wanna make sure that everybody's on the same page, that you cannot offer any kind of incentive as something as simple as a welcome package of you know starter business supplies is an incentive. So don't offer that to anybody but you may do it after somebody joins. Um, so that's what I do for a welcome package. What do I include in my welcome package? It's really just a basic starter kit of some basic supplies, a couple of Lacons in each size, a couple of heat seal packets, just so that they can see and feel in their hands the different options they have for growing their business. A couple of brochures, um, maybe a couple of catalogs since right now the starter kit is only coming with the one and then they've got to redeem the 25 I might send a couple of catalogs just so they've got some to be able to put into circulation right away I might send them a full-size big fat yummy hand cream it pretty much depends on my budget that month whether or not I do that it also depends on the um, how do I say this, level of excitement of the new person. I mean, sometimes I have people that are planning on joining as just a kidnapper. I'm not gonna send them a welcome package because they're really just looking to grab that the products and move on with their life. And I'm fine with that and I'll service them as a VIP customer. But somebody that's like, oh, I'm so excited. I hope I can earn the trip to Greece in the last month and a half. Um, hello, I'm sending her a ton of starter supplies in her welcome package. So you can just judge it based on um, your new person or based on your budget but at the end of the day do not feel required whatsoever to provide anybody a welcome package because posh provides you everything that you need so do not go beyond your budget or comfort level in doing this if um, you know it doesn't work for you that said how do I get people started I put them on the posh prep Academy <laughs> It's that easy. I put them on the Posh Prep Academy and I have a conversation with them. What are your hopes, goals, dreams, wants, and needs from Perfectly Posh? That way I can align my expectations with their expectations because they joined Posh for them, not for me. I want everybody to become a Platinum Premier, but not everybody wants to become a Platinum Premier. So have a conversation and and find out what do they want from this business. That way you can align, again, your expectations with theirs.
get them on the Posh Prep Academy. Oh, and then of course, make sure they know about their props. I joined as a complete kidnapper. I made my sponsor promise me up and down that I never ever had to sell $1 worth of Posh and the Posh police were not going to come try to take my kit back. I wasn't gonna get some nonsense fine, blah, blah, blah. I wanted nothing to do with selling whatsoever. And then I was like, once the kit got here, it sat on my counter for a couple of days and then I started to get into it and I was like, hey, what's this props? What's this prop stuff? And she was like, oh yeah, you can earn so much free stuff. <laughs> free stuff? <laughs> free stuff speaks to my inner goddess. So I was off and running and I thought, okay, well I'm gonna give this a go for 90 days. And why did I say 90 days? Because I know I have a background in business business needs a 90-day cycle our business needs a 90-day cycle any marketing campaign needs a 90-day cycle you need to be repetitive because that's how long it takes for momentum to build if somebody invests thousands of dollars into a marketing campaign in a newspaper or um, a magazine or something and they just do it one time they're wasting their money. There's not going to be a return. It's the same thing in our business. If you send out hundreds of dollars worth of samples for one month, and you maybe even follow up with everybody you sent samples to one time, you wasted your time, you wasted your money. It's not gonna happen. It takes time, it takes repetition. It takes you following up with somebody five to 10 times before you're going to get a response. And it's not because they don't care about you, it's not because they don't care about the posh, it's just because that's how we're wired as human beings. You've gotta post on your page that you are posh eight to 10 times before somebody's gonna remember that you are posh. You post on your page four times and then you stop posting your posh selfies, you stop posting about posh altogether and your neighbor goes to a vendor event and sees a posh booth, they're gonna be seeing it for the very first time. They're not gonna remember you. But when you're consistently keeping that out there, you're consistently sharing where you're going because of posh. I bought my coffee because of posh. I'm doing a face mask with Perfectly Posh. When you are consistently doing that but not being annoying, just integrating it into your life like lifestyle posts, and then your neighbor goes to the vendor event, they're gonna see the table and they're gonna say, oh, my neighbor does this. And hopefully that consultant is going to be like, awesome, we'll try any products while you're here. And if you have done your due diligence as a consultant and already previously offered samples to that neighbor, they're going to remember you and they're going to go back home and say, hey, Jessica, I saw Perfectly Posh and I finally tried it, blah, 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 I wanna place an order. Sarah Connor wants to be a platinum premiere. Hell yes, you wanna be a platinum premiere. Yes, you do. Okay, so Carrie, how do you motivate new team members to get sales? Props, I tell them about the props. But a thing I will touch on, oh God, I need water. <laughs> Babe, I need water. Um, you cannot motivate somebody. You can't motivate somebody, but you can inspire them. People have to motivate themselves, but you can motivate them by inspiring them. So when you are doing what you want them to do and you're sharing it, eventually they will catch on. You can lead a horse to water, but you can't make them drink. Do not stress about zeros on your team. If you've got somebody on your team that's not working their business, reach out to them every now and again, of course, and offer assistance. But if they are a zero, do not let them take up space in your brain. It is nothing that you're doing wrong. That is on them. Run with your runners. Anybody that's putting in PV, be reaching out to them and be talking to them about how their business is going and how they can help you or how you can help them. Melissa Huckfeld was also a kidnapper. Hello. So I am absolutely not opposed to kidnappers and I will talk real quick just because I can't help myself but keep talking <laughs> about kidnappers. So if you have somebody join your team that is a total kidnapper and they're saying I never want to sell, I never want to sell, blah 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 blah, make sure that they are empowered with the information about props first and foremost, because props are totally reachable goals, even for regular people that don't want to super work a business. Make sure they're informed about their props so that they don't get to their 90 days and they're like, oh, Melissa, you didn't tell me I could have earned $300 in free stuff. So make sure they know about that. Assuming they still put you off, which most of them will, 
service them as a VIP customer. Make sure they know, don't expect them to check in on the team page. They're a kidnapper, they told you they don't want the business. Do not expect them to do anything on your team page, but do offer to add them. If not, add them and let them know they can turn off notifications. We really want to do, we do want to get them to the team page because that's how they can catch that poshy bug, right? And get into the sisterhood or whatever all of that fun stuff and warm and fuzzies. Um, we do wanna get them on there and just let them know they can turn off notifications because if they are a kidnapper, and I'm sorry guys, I know I'm talking really fast, so I hope you're getting all this. If they are a kidnapper and you add them to the team page and they don't know they can turn off notifications, they might get super annoyed and like leave the group altogether because you guys know team pages blow up like crazy. Um, so anyway, get them onto the team page, let them know they can turn off notifications. I had another point, but I lost it because I got off on a tangent. Service them as a VIP customer. Let them know, hey, remember the splurge is coming. Hey, how you doing? Did you get a chance to try any of the new products? And if they are still um, ordering, if they're putting in PV every single month, but they're still not necessarily working it as a business, I might even still send them samples from the new catalog just to keep them engaged. Anybody that's putting in PV regularly is a very valuable member of your team and that's going to help you reach these promotions. Your promotions to pink plus one and pink plus two, sometimes those can be achieved because you're a rock star or you recruited a rock star, but no, the promotion that's gonna get you to pink plus three and the promotion that's gonna get you to premiere, that's gonna be all of these people on your team that are putting in $100, $300, $75 in PV every single month. So it's not a bad thing to recruit a customer who's a kidnapper so long as they do love Posh and you're keeping them engaged. Because if they were already spending $50 a month with you as their Posh consultant, now that they're getting a discount, maybe they should be spending more like $75 a month, right? Because they're gonna be earning back their commission. And God forbid, maybe they introduce their neighbor to it because now they earn a little bit of a commission when they make a sale and now they're putting in $100 or $125 a month. So don't be short-sighted and think that you're gonna lose a customer because yeah, you are gonna lose a customer, but guess what? You're in direct sales. It's your job to find more customers regularly. And it's your job to convert your current customers into your teammates because that's the circle and that's the wheel and that's how it goes round. And if you want to make the big money, you grow a team. I can't believe he didn't hear me and bring me water. <laughs> Don't quit. Sometimes you have hard days. You know, it's whatever. I haven't had that many hard days. I've definitely had a couple, but not that many. I mean, hello, Posh is pretty, it's pretty okay, right? What do you wish someone would have told you when you first started? Oh man. So when I first started, my consultant number is 16,210. And I got introduced to Posh because um, I was in a Facebook group for subscription box lovers. Like I used to get Pop Sugar and Birchbox and Ipsy and FabFitFun and la la la. I got all of the subscription boxes and so I was in, it was like a subscription addicts group or something. Anyway, so that's how I got introduced to Posh. So when I, oh my God, I thought I saw a spider on my wall. I did not. <laughs> that was so scary. Anyway, when I got introduced to Posh in that group and I eventually joined, which is a whole nother story, I felt like all of my, all of my friends already knew about Posh. Like I already felt like it's so saturated. And that was so ignorant for me to feel. And honestly, if somebody feels that way now, I don't wanna call names, but it's still ignorant to think that right now. So I wish that somebody would have shaken me and really made me realize, and I think that's why I get so excited when I'm doing these kinds of trainings and I go off on my tangents about the opportunity, the posh opportunity, because I really do wish somebody would have really shaken me and made me realize how much of an opportunity was really before me. I mean, a lot of people, I'm proud of my success, blah, blah, blah. People are awed by how fast I did things, but like I still think I could have done more or I could have done it faster. I don't have regrets or whatever, but there's still so much opportunity. And so I really wish that I would have fully understood that from day one. I didn't really start to realize it until I was like, oh, like six to eight months in. 
so it's fine it all worked out fine but I wish I would have realized it from day one and I think sometimes I can get a little too excited with my new recruits and I do caution you and that's why I say to have a conversation about their wants and needs and expectations first because I just want everybody to realize what an opportunity they have with Posh. Have I said opportunity enough tonight? <laughs> What's something else I wish someone would have told me when I started? Um, the customers, again, this took me a little while to realize, the customers are not gonna come to you. Even when you are good about personalizing your posts and not using stock graphics, the customers aren't gonna come to you. You've got to step out of your comfort zone and you've got to reach out to them personally and directly. Private message, text message, phone call, in person. You've got to ask them, will you try some samples for me and give me a review? And when you pose it like that, oftentimes it's a little less intimidating because people like to help other people. So hey, could you do me a favor? I'd like to give you some samples and in exchange, would you give me a review? just want you to try them. I'm not trying to get you to buy them. I just want you to try them and you tell me what you think. I'm wondering if I drank the Kool-Aid because I think this stuff is the best thing since sliced bread. I'd love to know what you think. However you think is the best approach depending on who you're talking to, but ask them to try it and give you an opinion because what's the name of the game? Everybody all together now. Get posh on the people. Whatever you have to do to get posh on the people, whether you're asking or um, making it into a contest or whatever, you get the posh on the people and then you follow up. And following up is scary, but it's also really easy because literally all you have to do is track who you got posh on and then you follow up with them. It's not a bother, it's literally customer service. It's rude for you to give somebody samples and for you to not follow up with them to ask them how they enjoyed them. Ask them if they had any questions. Ask, they, ask them if they tried them. It's literally rude for you to not follow up. And while yeah, it is rude when they don't respond to us and they ignore us, it is what it is, the customer is always right. And when you do cont continue to follow up, I promise you there are some people that have literally ignored me four times. And I continue to follow up every two months or so so that I'm not being annoying. And then eventually I get a response, oh my God, I'm so sorry, I missed these messages. Yeah, okay, sure you missed them. Of course I don't say that, I just think that on the inside, I'm like, oh no problem. How'd you like your samples? People will come back to you eventually and I've had some people that ignored me so many times end up placing an order or joining my team even. I'm telling you this has happened. But those are successes that nobody will realize when they quit their business or when they quit the follow up. Those are successes you only realize when you commit to that 90 day cycle and you see that little bit of momentum that keeps growing and you do another 90 day cycle and another 90 day cycle. I've had people court me for nine months and not place an order, but still join my team after receiving samples from me that long ago. It's everybody is on such a different timeline. We all live so differently. We all work our businesses so differently. I mean, look, there's 22, is there 22 or 23 now? 20 something platinum premieres, we're all very different in personality. We're all very different in how we manage our team. We're all very different in how we grew our businesses. Anybody can be successful in this business. It's so super simple. It's not easy. You've got to put the work in, but it's simple. What do you say to a stranger you posh to get follow up info? So, that's a toughie because it really is, you know, dependent on the situation. More often than not, I'm making sure they have my info. Um, I might whip out my phone and say, oh, I have a VIP. Depending, it depends. How long is your interaction? Like if you're just in the line of the grocery store, you can say, I've got a VIP group. I'd love to add you. Are you on Facebook? and friend them on Facebook. So many people are on Facebook that if you've had a substantive conversation of five or more minutes, it's not totally awkward for you to be like, oh, are you on Facebook? Because that's an easy way to follow up. Or you can say, oh, I've got a VIP email list. Can I grab your email? Email is a really like low risk thing for somebody to give out. So feel out the situation or whatnot. Or, um, oh my God, it was so nice meeting you. What's the best way that I can get back in touch with you? 
what's the best way I can send you um, my new customer offer? Whatever. And if they're um, off, you know, kind of not receptive to it right away, then offer your business card and keep it moving. It's really, I mean, so many people, like we just talked about people being so different, these situations are so very different. So those are my best tips out of the gates. So what should I do tonight, tomorrow morning, recruit or focus on sales? Oh God, I didn't even talk about rowing in a boat, but you guys, if you've ever watched my video from before, you need to have both oars in the water. So it's really important for you to be doing both sales and recruiting at all times. I would encourage you to go search my um, YouTube channel for the video that is Mastering the Power Hour. Go look for Mastering the Power Hour and it talks about income producing activities and it talks about your big rock activities and your big rock activities are making sales, booking parties, and recruiting. And really, you can focus on all three of those just by working your business through follow-up because we should be um, getting posh on the people, right? And then we're following up and we're offering every single person essentially to either make a sale host a party or join our team and when you do consistent follow-up and you're having several touch points with your customers you're eventually offering them all of these um, opportunities so the very first thing you should do tonight is make sure that you're organized make sure that you either have an excel spreadsheet a notebook or you're signed up for fit foo, fit foo i don't even know how to say it <laughs> to track your customers a notebook is what I use and that's what I recommend because it's something that you can immediately take action. I don't care if you've been really piss poor about your tracking up until now, start tracking today. You've got to track who you send and what you send them um, and when you send it so that you can follow up. So start tracking your customers right away. That's my first tip. And then my second tip would be to start following up. Even if you have somebody you sent samples to four months ago and you haven't followed up yet, shame on you, but it's never too late. Reach out. Maybe they're waiting to hear from you. People um, that don't hear from you regularly are not going to feel loyal to you. And when they end up at that vendor event down the road, they're going to join her team because you haven't contacted them. Whereas you're sitting back thinking that it's a bother to contact them because she said she was interested in joining your team four months ago, but then she never did. So you're sitting here with feelings hurt. <laughs> And then she ends up at the vendor event and she gets all excited again and she signs up with that lady. Whereas if you would have kept up your consistent follow-up and she was at the vendor event, she would come home and sign up with you. If you guys have any other questions, just drop them in the thread. I will go through and see if I missed any questions while we were live. And I hope you guys have a good night. Best of luck to you and your business.